Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Esports Wrap. This week we're actually going to be talking about, uh, well, a game from Blizzard called Heroes of the Storm. Now, it's been around for some time now, but it's, uh, it's really starting to ramp up right up and now. So, I think that's the, well, that's the main reason why I'm going to be talking about it today. Uh, trying to get it to where I can actually show off Facebook's chat, but it is having some problems. Um, wow. Okay. Yeah, I think I may not be able to show off our Facebook comments for this particular episode. Yep, doesn't appear that I can. Anyway, so if you'd like, you can join us inside the Twitch chat. I guess I'll remove that for now. And I guess we'll begin. So, starting off, Heroes of the Storm, also known as HOTS, or H O T S, not to be confused with um, Heart of the Swarm, which was a StarCraft II expansion. Um, it's also known as Heroes. And that's how I prefer to be calling it as we continue on. Now, Heroes was put into closed beta January 13th, 2015. And went live June 2nd, 2015. So, all in all, it's had a pretty good run so far. Um... Hold on a second. Am I? Is there any sound? Sound. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Okay. Oh, okay. So, never mind. I figured out the reason why that was happening. Okay. So, continuing on. Well, actually, continuing on. Yes. So, it was in beta, closed beta from January 2nd, I mean, sorry, January 13th, 2015, and went live June 2nd, 2015. So, that gave it a good breadth of time to actually get things running and whatnot. Now, at present, some consider it more along the lines of a hero brawler or an action real-time strategy game. Though that last one, the real-time strategy games, typically people really see that as something along the lines of StarCraft or StarCraft II or, you know, games along that level, um, where it's more about strategy, not so much about fighting and so it kind of falls more on the lines of the like of dodo or league of legends which are multiplayer online battle arenas also known as mobas now ironically enough originally uh heroes of the storm was called blizzard dota after dota and it changed its name to blizzard all stars before i actually um, changed and going live to the public as Heroes of the Storm. Now, there are 
different modes of this game. Now, there are tutorials, there's training, there's versus AI, which means, yeah, you can actually set different levels of difficulty for the artificial intelligence to play against. There is quick match, which where you um, just can group up with some friends all by yourself and actually go in and just play against random players. It's not ranked. It's, it's more so to get accustomed to stuff. Some people prefer um, using AIs for that, but some people prefer going with actual real people. So it's, it's a preference thing. There is unranked. There is ranked. Well, unranked is more of the quick match kind of stuff. Um, there's ranked, there's hero brawls, and then there's custom games. Now, delving a little bit deeper into that. Ranked has two different segments called Heroes League and Team League. Now, here's where it becomes a little different. Heroes League is where you join the ranked games solo, meaning you can't join up with friends. You're going to be joining up with a completely random team, and you're going to have to make your way up the ranks from Bronze to Grand Master by yourself, essentially. Uh, team League allows you either two or three, or up to a full or or a full party, which is five people, to join up as a team and play together. So, for example, if it's you and a friend, the two of you would be paired together. Then you guys would be dropped in with another three people. They can be linked up or whatnot. They don't have to be. Thank you for the follow live gamesinator. Um, I actually have my sound off, so that's why it wouldn't have made a sound just then. But hero, okay. So yeah, that's that's where team league pretty much stands. Now there is heroes brawl. Heroes brawl has three different things. It has arenas, it has mutators, and it has single lanes. Now. Arenas is, well, actually, for starters, Heroes Brawl changes every week. So it's never quite the same. Now, Heroes Brawl pretty much gives you, when you sign up for it, it will give you one of three characters to play. You have to pick between one of these randomly selected characters, and then it will pair you up with a five other people who also have to pick one of these three characters now the first team once you've done all that the first team that actually uh meets the objective because each hero brawl has a particular objective that you have to meet the first team that wins that wins the round and the first team to win two rounds wins the match so best two out of three that's that's how the typical match goes sometimes mutators happen where it changes up the mechanics of the match so where something typically would happen something else is happening and single lanes is just where you have one lane map with no objectives no mercenaries and no porting back to your base or you aka using your hearthstone that means yeah you're pretty much going to have to deal with this if you die then that's how you get back or you run back it it's it's very cutthroat in, the, in that sense now custom games are just that they are very customizable they can allow five players on either side you can use ais and or allow up to six observers now the thing about this is custom games are typically what you'll find used in tournaments just to make sure that things are fair and uh, they can actually customize which maps you're going to be playing on. And it's, it's pretty much up to the tournament makers exactly how things go down. Now, moving on from that, there are four main character roles. And I'll list them by total characters. So right now, the one with the most is Assassins, followed by Warriors, followed by Support. And, well, actually Support and Specialists actually are tied right now. Uh, granted there is a new patch coming out so 
There might be some new characters coming out soon. We'll have to see how that really works out. But there are 71 characters in total. Yeah, so you have a whole bunch of characters that you can play with. And each one of them has their own rank. Well, level, I should say. So the more you play with a particular character, the more it levels up. The more it levels up, the more loot you get. Loots could be um, different skins, mounts, uh, voice uh, lines, spray cans. So it kind of takes that kind of edge from, well, that kind of point from Overwatch where you can spray stuff on the wall, on the floor, and whatnot. Um, and also banners for when you take down buildings or uh, forts or whatever you want to call them. So overall, some characters typically are better at some maps. Now that's not always the case. And not only that, there's also the issue that, hey, I, I decided I'm going to play this particular character. But when I actually go to play a game, I get a map that's unfavorable for that character. So that doesn't always work out. And sometimes, like, let's say I'm using Sylvanas, which is a specialist character that when you attack using your basic attacks, or any attack for the most part, it will stop a fort, well, a ta fort's towers from doing damage to you. It will actually stop minions from in their spot so that they can't move and they won't damage you. It pretty much stuns everything. That's her speciality. Now, if I play on a map that has no forts, for the most part, doesn't really have towers that do damage, then that kind of puts me at a disadvantage because I'm playing a character that's built for a different kind of map. And so I kind of have to move and adjust myself to play along with this kind of map type. So it, it, it requires some kind of uh, skill, some thought, some strategy. Now, much like Blizzard's company, sorry, much like Blizzard Heroes' parent company, it's building up its league like how they're building up their league for Overwatch, it's been building up its league for Heroes of the Storm. And Heroes is mainly going to start moving in the same direction. Now, granted, they've already had competitions, and they will actually start doing something that they're taking a, a page out of Overwatch's book, even though they haven't really started it yet. And they're going to be funding teams to make this their main focus instead of having to wonder about jobs and stuff like that. Thank you for following. Surprise, Moo Foo. Um, now, these jobs for these teams, now they're going to be making roughly around, or sometimes more than, well, actually at the least, I should say, $100,000 a year. That's if they're are actively participating for the year. Now, of course, they can make more than that. And on top of that, when they actually participate in these uh, competitions, they have the chance to get that prize pool, or at least something from the prize pool for the, like the top two or three uh, for that tournament. Now, like I was saying, they very want they very much want this to become a career move for their players it doesn't necessarily mean that their players can't play other games like if they want to stream them playing league of legends or dota or something like that um they can technically do that now there still has to be a level of professionalism to it but for the most part they want them to really focus in on playing this game getting better at it um and whatnot so, yeah, there's, they're going to be trying to say, hey, spend the time getting better at any one of any of these 71 different characters that you could play, getting better at strategies, which change up based on the map that you're on, um, so on and so forth. Now, the reason for all of this was that they listened to their uh, their players, I guess you could say, um, and that pri big prize pools aren't very enticing 
because everything goes to one, two, or three different teams. Um, so if I spend the majority of the year, for example, preparing for this kind of tournament and I lose, I don't make any money. So that's not very enticing to me as trying to go professional with this. This is kind of, that kind of leads to the point of, oh, hey, I have a main job. I'll take vacation time to go to the tournament and I play at home when I have the time to, to get better. They kind of move away from that, say, nope, this is, this is what you do. This is how you make your money. Let's go. Now, in esports, typical prize pools for uh, Heroes of the Storm is about a hundred thousand dollars. So that's completely different from what they'd be making within that year if they're actively players. Well, if they're active players in tournaments, I should say. Um, they go up to not only 200, 300, 400, 500 thousand dollars thank you goose on tilt for following um but there has even been a tournament where it's been the prize pool has been one million dollars thank you for following kelvin 001 um now overall the sum total at the as of the end of 2016 if i remember correctly was about nine million one hundred and sixty thousand dollars um that's a lot of money to be quite honest um it's not the most that you will find inside of a uh inside of a tournament setting but it's still quite a lot so for example the top grossing player as of 2016 out of his when you combine the his total sum from the past 20 games was seventeen thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars and some cents now add that on top of what they're planning on doing that's a hundred and seventeen thousand dollars a hundred and seventeen thousand seven hundred and ninety dollars and change that's a lot of money now granted he would have to more than likely play I mean if he it depends on if he's on a team it depends on if he's going solo but for the most part that will probably be a little different because i know teams they there's different splits and so on and so forth but overall it's it's still pretty nice now for our non-competing players they still want you to really be interactive with the game so when you're not actually playing it they want you to live it they want you to be watching stuff they want you to be watching in particular these games that these top players are playing they want you to actually watch it learn from it get better at the game so that you can actually then become part of this so it's not a oh i wish i could become pro kind of thing it's it's giving a fair shake to any team that really wants to become pro. Now, not only that, they're also looking at filling in, uh, it's, I wouldn't say it's a big question, but it's still a question that you typically would start to ans ask in other games that have different specialities, different classes, and so on and so forth. Who is the best player at this class? Who's the best player at this character? And that's part of what this is also going to be answering. So if you're the best Sonya player, then, hey, we're going to find out who's the best Sonya player because so on and so forth, they're going to be showing up to these tournaments. Or at least that's the idea. Now, speaking of characters, you have to keep in mind that there are 71 different characters. So with that in mind, there are different tiers to these characters. And for the most part, no character is supposed to by itself shake the meta. Now the meta pretty much is what shapes the current game. When thing the, uh, how should I put it? The most popular type of stuff that 
is the best at the time. So, no character is supposed to fundamentally shake the game by itself. But say, after so many characters come in, things may start to tilt in one direction. And that's kind of how they've built the game. So, we've got different tiers of characters as well. We've got A+, plus, um, we've got, sorry, we've got S+, plus, we've got S-, minus, A+, plus, A-, minus, B+, plus, B-, minus, and C. Now, this is coming from Tent on Hammers website, tentonhammers.com, so feel free to take a look over there. Now, S+, plus, these are the characters, the heroes that are undeniably too strong and can be placed in any composition and succeed there is sorry it's not s or whatever minus it's just s plus s so on and so forth the s tier are heroes which are often first pick first to get banned and first and are sorry and are considered top tier a plus are above the point balance these heroes comprise most compositions and should only see minor changes. A tier is the focal point of balance. These heroes should see few if any changes. B plus means these heroes are generally considered good but require a highly skilled individually, individual to get the most out of them and aren't viable in all situations. Tier B Team compositions, compositions generally need to be built around a hero in this pool to make them viable. They are rarely, if ever, seen in competitive play. And tier C, which is very low pick rate heroes and not considered viable. Those are the different tiers. Now I'm going to go through some of these tiers just so you can get an idea of which characters are which. Now, the S plus tier is, I'm not actually seeing anything inside of it. So according to this, there are no characters that are undeniably too strong and can be placed in any composition and succeed. So you don't have to worry so much about characters being OP, short for overpowered. Overall, though, there are characters that are that are in the S class of things. Those characters, if I can get this to go properly, are Anub Arak, which has amazing win rates, lots of mobility and crowd control, and he perf slots perfectly into any team. There is Arthas, both of whom so far are warriors. His crowd control is good, but he lacks mobility. His self-sustain is high, and his root is so annoying. We've got Dekka, which is also another warrior, who has global presence, an invaluable stun, self-sustain, and a fantastic heroic. Now, heroics are the special abilities of this class, or of classes, I should say, or heroes that give them unique abilities that they can only use uh, every so often. These are not the typical skills that you would use when you are playing. These are to be generally used at particular intervals, points, when they can really make or break a game. Or, you know, a push. The next one, of course, is Genji, which is an assassin. He's amazing if Amazing if he can snowball and so good at picking off low health heroes. Now, a next one, the next two are also assassins. One, the next one is Grey Mane, which has amazing burst potential, but requires strong composition to form around him. Uh, that pretty much means, you know, he needs a good team. And the next assassin is Gul'dan, who has incredible sustain, fantastic damage, and Horrify, which is one of his skills, is a game changer. Next up is one of my personal favorites, Sonya, who's a warrior. And it says recent improvements to her healing from Whirling Blade, which is a skill, have helped in her enormously. 
And the last one for the S tier is Uther, which says it has fantastic. It, by the way, Uther is support type. So that's typically what you'll find either making sure you don't die or healing you to make sure you don't die. That kind of thing. Um, it has fantastic burst healing, a solid talent rework, and his stun remains invaluable. So while he's healing you so that you can get away or continue the push, he can also stun the opponents that are trying to kill you which makes it more possible for you to then kill them. So it's a win-win kind of situation. Now, I won't get into the whole list. Well, I won't get into the full breakdown for the A-plus tier, but it's Alarak, Oriel, Falstad, Garrosh, Kalthasis, Li Ming, Malfurion, Mathael, Medivh, Mazebo, Regar, Stitches, Sylvanas, who is one I had spoken about earlier um, saying that it has amazing lane push potential and amazing silence and constantly good damage but there's Stukov, Taskadar Varian, Valia Zul and Zaratul from there we go on to the A um, tier the B plus tier the B tier Unfortunately, there's no characters that they currently have listed in the C tier, which are the very low pick rate, he rate heroes and not considered viable. So what they're pretty much trying to say is that all characters, for the most part, are viable. It's just depending on how well you play them and what your skill level is. So you can be a good character and play it awesomely. You can be a somewhat good character and play it horribly. It all depends on you and your understanding of the character. I hope this episode has given some insight to the new, well, to Heroes of the Storm. I can't really call it new because it's been around for a little over, I can officially say a little over two years now. So... For the most part though, Blizzard is really starting to push this game as of this year when it comes to esports and leagues and actually getting things up and running. Not only that, depending on how things go with this game, other games may see an uptick in um, how they handle tournaments. So for example, if it goes over with this, then you might find Hearthstone getting something special just because uh, the players who play that. You might find some uh, in Diablo. I don't know what they might do with Diablo, but so on and so forth. You kind of get the idea. And since Destiny 2 is now part of the Battle.net framework, then there might even be some tournaments with Destiny 2 that are kind of based, well, I'm sure Blizzard slash Activision and um, Bungie would kind of put their whole thing together and figure that out, but... I completely see it happening with that game as well. So, again, I hope this episode has made things a little bit clearer for everyone. And if you have any questions, of course, you know, feel free to always message me. Okay, that fat cookie, that's interesting. I'm... Hmm. I'm not sure how to really answer that one. Probably the first. Probably the first. Because then I could scrape it off. Or do something to that. Can't really rework the inside. It's can rework the outside, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Take care, everyone. And don't forget... I do have another stream that's on Thursdays, that is Tech Talk, which we go over uh, the technology news of the past week. That comes on Thursdays at 6.30pm, same time as of course this show, which is Tuesdays 6.30pm. And I hope you have a good day.